This is Witchbase News for Friday the 5th of April 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous news this week ...you can now create your own scripted adventures for Elite Dangerous and it's all hands on deck as Oya pulls a surprise attack out of its thorax. I'm gonna say thorax. You know how this bit goes please like, subscribe and ding that little bell so that YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to directly help our work here at the Burr Pit you can also support us through Patreon. Links to that and everything else are in the description below. For the uninitiated the team behind the website at lilydangereuse.fr creates and publishes standalone adventures that can be undertaken in the game and driven via the website using text and audio media ideally from a second screen. Where Elite Dangerous doesn't offer much in the way of a structured narrative driven experience the adventures created by the team have proven to be very popular with those commanders who are looking for that absent structured experience in the game. We featured the website on this broadcast before and aside from being quite frankly a genius idea the quality of the associated narratives and web based experience that the site provides overall is truly fantastic. Clearly a labour of love for the team at Lily Dangereuse. The team aren't done yet however and this is where it gets really interesting. There are only so many people on the team and there's only so many hours in the day and so in another quite frankly genius move Lily Dangereuse have now created a stunning web tool that allows the community themselves to create their own scripted adventures for the game and then have them vetted and published on the site for others to enjoy. And just like that the volume of these scripted ED adventures is set to explode. The tool the team have created is super easy to use and has just a few reasonable base requirements for an adventure to meet before it's available to be QA checked by the team at Lily Dangereuse. As always to get started you'll find everything you need in the description below this video. I had a whole news item planned out this week about the impending attack on Oya. I'd spoken to the AXI leadership, made sure I understood their plans and even got solid estimates on when Oya was likely to fall. Confident that I'd be in a position to give you guys a solid heads up on when to get involved so that you could plan to get your decals and book the time to catch the race to the finish and also watch Oya explode. What you're hearing now ladies and gentlefolk is not that script. Up until the Thargs Day tick yesterday as I speak these words the anti xeno community were in the midst of a huge effort to push back resistance being offered by the third of the Thargoid Titans to be targeted by the community. Far from being an all guns blazing full on war on the Titans surrounding systems however the single most efficient method available to commanders was actually the medium of science and this particular scientific effort had the double advantage of allowing the AXI to distribute some wealth to the participants at the same time for at the start of this week the AXI had initiated the great Oya sampling event. In essence what the AXI were doing was buying biological samples taken from Thargoid scouts via a network of AXI owned fleet carriers. These samples which are gathered from Thargoid scouts via the use of research limpets could then all be handed in by the carriers owners affecting massive influence and control changes on the systems in which the samples were taken. The AXI were paying significantly over the odds for each sample bought to the tune of 500,000 credits in fact and those purchases were being funded by their organised farming of lurgy lettuce spire sites. If things had played out as expected then Oya would have been down to maintaining a presence in around 7 systems and the Titan itself would have fallen somewhere between the 11th and 13th of April. That all changed yesterday morning however. When the Thargs Day tick had finished Oya had suddenly sent over 20 systems into a state of alert completely breaking the established pattern that we'd seen in the ongoing war effort for well over a year. Speculation ran in the community for a while questioning whether this was a bug, genuine new behaviour or some sliders had been moved at FDEV HQ to slow down the community's titan trashing. 
However the release of a Galnet article later in the day proclaiming that the cheeky space vegetables had changed tactics, deploying a surprise fleet of Orthrus interceptors into surrounding systems immediately took Bug off the table. The article even using the words ...breaking expected behaviour. Suffice to say all of this has thrown all the major anti-Xeno and war effort groups into a degree of disarray. But after the initial wave of understandable irritation and downright anger had passed, as perhaps you'd expect with the Elite Dangerous community, that disarray quickly turned to reorganising and renewed determination as the various groups adjusted their plans to compensate as much as possible. So here's where we're at as of this morning. The reality is that the Titan Oya is extremely unlikely to fall this week. By the AXI's best guesstimates with a concerted effort we're probably likely to take down 3 to 5 hearts at the most by the time the next Thargs Day tick comes around due to the damage resistance the Titan now has available to it. Parallel to the ongoing Titan assault the scout genetic sampling effort that I spoke of earlier will continue and then there will still be efforts from across the community to interfere with the Orthrus operations in the newly established alert systems. But no two ways about it we will almost certainly have a bunch more Thargoid controlled systems around Oya by this time next week and the destruction of Oya is off the table likely for a few weeks. The question remains over why we're suddenly seeing this change in Thargoid tactics. A solid argument could be made that it's perhaps unreasonable to expect the remaining Titans to not act differently, particularly in light of what happened to their comrades over the last few weeks. A much wiser man than I once said quote ...no plan survives first contact with the enemy unquote and that is absolutely true. I'd imagine all our various headcanons will justify what happened yesterday in all sorts of ways. Ultimately out here in the real world I would think it's probably extremely likely that FDEV just don't want us chewing through the remaining titans as quickly as we were and no best laid plan against internet aliens can possibly hope to stand against the might of a determined project manager working to a planned schedule. What Frontier have done this week is not so much move the goalpost as the penalty was being taken but rather load the goalpost and the goalie into the back of a truck and drive them both away at high speed. <laughs> if you want to get involved in the somewhat still fluid situation yourself then you'll find some useful reference material <laughs> linked below. Will you be creating your own adventure for other commanders to enjoy via Lily Dangereuse? Why do you think Oya deployed so many Orthrus this week and are you now chasing a speeding truck down the road carrying a full load of nanite torpedoes? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.